This video is sponsored by no one. The computer reviewed I purchased and wanted to share my thoughts with you. A big shout out to all of my new subscribers. You are helping this channel grow and it is very much appreciated and you put the smile on my face. Sometimes when shopping you see something and go, for that price, I could try it. That's what we have here today, another generic computer. This one is the Model T11. It is a first tier, a fanless mini PC with an Intel Atom Z8350, 4 gigabytes of RAM, dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and Windows 10 Pro on a 64 gigabyte eMMC module. I was excited to open this one up. I snagged it for $59, where it is often around $99 or sometimes higher, but I've seen it as low as $52. I almost bought another one, but I'm glad I've waited. Through my testing, I can say you probably don't want this as a desktop device. Does it work? Yes, for checking email or doing something simple, but there could be other options. You might have a compelling reason to buy one though, and I'll explain more on why that could be later. All that aside, I'm excited to try this thing out. Included in the box is a VESA mount adapter and screws, HDMI cable, a 5V DC power supply, and a user manual. On the front is nothing but a small hole for an LED to shine through. On one side is a power switch with two USB 2 ports, and on the opposing side there are two USB 3.0 ports with a micro SD card reader. On the back is a VGA port, headphone jack, gigabit ethernet, an HDMI port that is just labeled HD, a reset button and DC input, along with a spot for a Kensington lock. While the other minis have required 12 volt DC, this one runs off of 5 volts. The bottom has a cover you can remove to put a 2.5 inch drive in, as well as the points for the visa mount. On the top are just some stickers, including a warm tip telling us it can run Windows 10, but we shouldn't upgrade. Setting up Windows didn't seem to take that long, but everything else did. I performed benchmarks before doing updates, and then Windows Update was one of those things where you wondered if the system had locked up or not. Turns out it hadn't, but I think it was around two hours before all the updates were done. The eMMC isn't viewable by Crystal Disk Info, so we have no idea on its health, but Crystal Disk Mark still gives us how fast it is. Running CPU Z, the T11 scored 49.6 single core and 231.5 multi core. Cinebench surprised me a little. The single core test took about an hour and a half to run, but it finished with 150 points, and the multi-core came in at 518. That isn't far off from the GK2's first run of 570. In Linux, Sysbench CPU benchmark scored 243 single and 1481 multi-core. Geekbench 5 also finished with 198 single and 628 multi-core. Here is how it stands with the rest of the mini PCs tested in this video series. I have about 26 Geekbench 5 tests done under my profile, and the only machine that this beats out is a Dell Precision 390 with a Core 2 E6400. I also have the Sysbench score, which it also beats the older processor, but only in the combined score. The old Core 2 still beats the Atom in single core performance. YouTube playback was a joke. It struggled hard to play my 4K 30fps sample, dropping about half the frames. It did about the same with the 60fps sample at 1080 and even dropped frames at 720 60fps. 1080 playback was also slow, as was retrieving the pages. What is funny, I had a local clip of what I normally test at 4K, and that played back just fine locally when encoded with H.264. VP9 playback though was so bad, I'd consider it unplayable. Gameplay was no good either. Widescreen Super Mario World was unplayable, running at about half of the required speed. I also couldn't quite get games to play well with the older emulators. When I fired up my arcade emulator for Killer Instinct, it also glitched, and that is normally one of the easiest emulators I have to run. The test I did under USB 3 reveals what I expected, and it matches my XPS desktop. What is new for this is the SATA speed test. The SATA interface goes over a USB bridge, 
and comes in at less than half of what the drive can achieve. It runs faster plugged into a USB 3 port on this computer rather than plugged into the SATA connector. That is still faster than USB 2 though. I did a network speed test with iPerf 3 and it performed well achieving the 930 megabits per second mark that seems to max out on my network. Getting inside the T11 requires removal of the feet to get access to the screws and a little force to overcome the clips. The bottom side of the top cover has a plate with a very small pad to help transfer heat from the CPU's heatsink, as well as the soldered on Wi-Fi antenna. Along with the motherboard is a daughter board connected via ribbon cable that houses USB 2 ports, VGA, and SATA, as well as the power LED and a second power button. There is a power button on the motherboard as well. I didn't get the heat sink off to see what's underneath it, but here are some still pictures I captured. Power and temperature readings were taken running Windows 10. Power consumption can be down to 3 watts at idle and maxed out around 7 watts. Temperature test was done with ambient temperature around 19 C and idle temps were around 53 C and the max temps during a 30 minute benchmark was at 73 C. I've tried using an external 120 mm fan but it hasn't seemed to help any, probably due to the poor heat transfer from the heat sink to the body. The BIOS is locked down, but in the boot menu there are some interesting options. The Android one didn't do anything, but the EFI shell gave me something that I will have to explore at another time. So would I recommend buying this for anything? Sure. I'm going to play around with it more as a real Raspberry Pi replacement. I have two of the original Model Bs and this should be able to take their place in computing with capacity to spare. How does it compare to a Raspberry 4 though? I'm uncertain. Using the Geekbench 5 browser, it seems to score near the same as the Raspberry Pi at stock frequencies, while if the Pi is overclocked, it could match or outscore this Atom board. Real world performance though could be different. Does anyone out there watching have a Raspberry Pi 4 and we can collab on a comparison video? For use as a desktop, I seriously say no. If you are really looking for a cheap desktop, you can do better with something like the PC I have for sale locally for $30. That is something I wouldn't have said for any of the other mini PCs evaluated so far. The next mini PC I have to review looks similar to the B-Link U59, but it is in a different class and acquisition was different as well. The journey of previously reviewed mini PCs or Nook clones as they might be, has been in part looking at to switch some low-end powered computing from ARM-based SBCs to inexpensive x86 machines. I've only used a GPIO on SBCs to add real-time clocks with batteries, which is something all of these machines have come with. This machine with a 4-core processor and 4 gigabits of RAM with decent I.O. could be a real contender if I can figure out and get past some of the weird things like the built-in EFI shell. This machine definitely requires a closer look. At the price I bought it for, or even $100, this could still be an alternative to things like the Raspberry Pi 4 that are currently hard to get, with a bonus of mainline software support. Just don't get this and expect a thrilling desktop experience. It could serve as one as long as video playback isn't a priority. That is it for this video. If you liked the video, please consider pressing the like button. It doesn't cost you anything. Subscribe if you like this content and so you don't miss any further mini computer reviews. Take a look at my community page to help shape the future of this channel. Or just comment nope to let me know you made it this far. Until next time, I'm Good Monkey. Thanks for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible. So like I said, I'm excited to try it out. <laughs> we'll see if my excitement holds up.